shirt, so that's perfect. Now, as we go through the carbon dioxide at transport here, keep in mind that unlike oxygen, carbon dioxide is really diffusible. It's all right, it can really has an easier time getting through. Sorry has a harder time getting, uh, has an easier time getting through the membrane. And there are more than one ways of taking carbon dioxide from your tissues to the, uh, to the bloodstream. Now in oxygen, there's only one way to carry oxygen. That's attached to red blood cells. 99% of the time, that's how we carry oxygen. There is about 1% of the time where it's oxygen as a gas, right? But that's very, very rare. Most of the time, oxygen is carried trapped in the red blood cells. Carbon dioxide is different. Carbon dioxide is going to be produced by the tissue cells. About 70% of the time is going to be carried in the red blood cell. A lot of the time, much more than when we start seeing, right? Let me phrase that, right? 70% of the time it's carried as bicarbonate. So right here, it gets introduced into the red blood cells. It reacts with water. And keep in mind, these are the two byproducts of aerobic respiration. So in aerobic respiration, we take glucose and oxygen. We make 36 ATPs. And we produce carbon dioxide and water, right? In the red blood cells, we have an enzyme that allows us to catalyze a reaction to make bicarbonate. The bicarbonate then turns into carbonic acid right here. And there's a kind of a balance between bicarb and carbonic acid. And in our blood, there's, about, there's a lot more bicarbonate. That's why our pH of the blood is slightly basic, 7.4. So most of the carbon dioxide and water are carried from your tissues to the lungs as bicarbonate. 23% of the time is going to react with hemoglobin. And then we have carbanohemoglobin. And then 7% of the time <clears throat> is going to be carried as carbon dioxide gas in plasma. Think of this as, you know, like carbonated water but carbonated plasma. Now, 7% isn't a lot. It's still seven times more than how oxygen would be. In our alveolar cells, what happens? The bicarbonate goes into the red blood cells. So in the lungs, <clears throat> we're going to take that bicarbonate and we form carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide then is moving to alveolus and you can expel it out. The gas, carbon dioxide, that's trapped in the plasma, that just goes easily through. Remember, there's not a big concentration difference between the alveolar carbon dioxide and capillary carbon dioxide. What makes this reaction go is because carbon dioxide is so much easier to cross the barrier. Okay, so just remind, you know, kind of keep that in mind. <clears throat> As we go through it, sorry. Let me get a drink. <clears throat> okay, I'm good. <laughs> Let's go through a little bit of, so review these chemoreceptors. Um, I just wanna go through some of the diseases and then we will end, right? You guys have, I mean, by now you've heard about all what happens with aging and we know what it is, well, how it happens to people with COVID right? Vital capacity, maximum minute ventilation decreases, dead space increases. And there's a big one right here, right? The ability to remove mucus from the respiratory system decreases. So then you have more infections from things that we can get rid of. It can cause pneumonias and acute bronchitis in the elderly. One second. All right, so when we're looking at this right here, 
when we're looking at this, understand that, you know, there's these diseases. Any of these diseases is a telltale sign that you might have issues with, uh, issues with, you know, if, if you get infected with COVID. So asthma, COPDs, we talked about pneumothorax and all the issues with the pneumothorax. So just review those. We're not going to go into too much detail about it in the test, but I do want to know about it, all right? All right, so sorry about that. Injuries to the chest wall, a pneumothorax we kind of discussed in class. Remember, anytime you can perforate that seal between the, all right, the parietal and the visceral pleural, you're gonna cause free air from the environment to go into that space. So then your vacuum will be completely obliterated. When that happens, you cannot have the, you know, you can still have the chest rise and lower. Now you can still increase the volume in your thoracic cavity, but you can't pull the lungs open, right? So you need that vacuum to be able to pull the lung matter open. If there's any free air, then you obliterate that vacuum and you will not be able to move the lungs in and out, even though your thorax can increase. Um, in terms of asthma, asthma is characterized by spasms of smooth muscles results in partial complete closure of the airways, inflammation, inflated alveolar cells, and excess mucus production. These are what we normally see. These are three telltale signs of asthma. One, bronchiolar constriction. Air cannot get through. Caused by spasming of the bronchiolar alveolar, uh, bronchiolar smooth muscle. Increased mucus production. In the next slide, I believe I have an actual picture. Let me see where that is. Right here. And this slide, this is a mucus plug that somebody, a cast of the mucus plug that somebody actually exhaled out. All right, you can actually see just how large this mucus really is. It's kind of gross. And you do see smaller versions of it in our bronchioles. You can imagine that's living and sting in the bronchioles right here. Air is going to have a hard time getting through this massive amount of mucus. What else do we see in terms of asthma? Inflammation of the mucosa. So what we're going to see is the actual bronchioles, the size of the bronchioles decrease tremendously because of this constriction. Any one of these is bad. Right, so if you have constriction, less air gets through. Now you have mucus production as well, and inflammation of mucosa. That smaller bronchial size now has more mucus inside of it and increased inflammatory cells. You can imagine the disturbance for air getting in or out. The next ones we're going to talk about are. I'm just going to skip the pulmonary fibrosis for a second. Talk about other COPDs. Pulmonary fibrosis is not a COPD. So COPD obstructs either air getting in or you have a hard time getting it out. So in terms of COPD is usually associated with smoking. There's two of them I want you to know. One is chronic bronchitis, the other is emphysema. In terms of you know, chronic bronchitis right here, cilia, And chronic bronchitis. It's actually a chronic infection and bronchial inflammation. Um, you'll see just some minor changes on the chest x-ray and usually it's clinically diagnosed, meaning the doctor will just kind of talk to you and then figure out what's going on. There is no blood test for it. So what we do is do a history, physical, and this is the telltale sign. You have two to three consecutive months of productive cough for two to three consecutive years. So what happens is you have a cough that doesn't go away. Productive cough means you're producing sputum with it. It's not like a dry cough. And you have it almost every year for two to three years and almost like clockwork. Spring comes, you have this cough. And this cough lasts all through summer. And it starts, you start having more and more sputum coming up with it. That is chronic bronchitis. 
Now, usually they do give people antibiotics for it and lots of anti-inflammatories. But for the most part, it's really hard to treat because it's hard to treat that productive cough for that long of a time. And usually it's just something that the patient has to live with. Now, emphysema is slightly different. In emphysema, we call them the pink puffers. The problem with emphysema is that the lungs are overly expand, expanded. So they're able to receive oxygen, but cannot expirate carbon dioxide. You can imagine if your chest is overly expanded, it's kind of easier to get oxygen in, but in order to expel it, you need to decrease the volume, right? And if you have overly expanded lungs, you're gonna have a hard time decreasing the volume. So then you get expirate. So we call these the pink puffers. These are the people that are kind of bent over, they're barrel chested, they're bent over almost like tripoding, so then they can decrease the size of their thorax. And the problem with this is they have a hard time exhaling. Lungs are fibrotic, less elastic, air passages collapse as they exhale out, as it collapse, air can't exit out. So here's a picture of a normal chest x-ray here. Pretty good. Now again, in a chest x-ray, all the white is gonna be your ribs. Here's your clavicle, whoops. On each side, here's a clavicle. And then you can see the cardiac silhouette right here. So that's a nice normal heart. We want the heart to be about a third to half the size of the the actual thoracic cavity, so that's good. And we want this all to be black, right? The blacker the actual lung matter, the more healthy it is. Now you should see some white, right? The white are all the bronchi and the bronchioles, which are a little bit, has more mass to it. Because it has more mass, anything with density and mass, the x-rays can't get through. Because the x-rays can't get through, it can't cause the film behind it to turn black. So the heart, pretty thick, right? We dissected the, the pig heart. You can see how thick it was, right? That heart is so thick that x-rays can't get through and it never touches the film behind you. And it looks white then because it can't get through. So let's take a look right here. The lung itself is very long here, right? Take a look over here. Right, the, look at how large the lung itself is, right? Very long, very enlarged lung matter, right? That's how we can tell in terms of uh, emphysema. Now, what else do we see besides emphysema and asthma and bronchitis is this last one that I'll talk about is fibrosis. Compared to what we see now in fibrosis, you have fibrous tissue that kind of, instead of, uh, that takes a place of alveolar tissue. Look at how small the lung is here, right? You don't see lots of real healthy, dark, you know, kind of a black colored material here anymore. You got white dots everywhere. The white dots are everywhere here because you have replacement of those alveolar cells with thick fibrous connective tissue. And you see lots of scarring here, right? And that's what we do notice with people with pulmonary fibrosis. Lots of scarring, hard time opening up the airways. And we call them the blue bloaters. They're blue because they can't get the air into their lungs. If you can't get the air into the lungs, you can't get oxygen in the lungs. And you have cyanosis as a result. So, that is what we see, the difference between those two diseases. Fibrosis is not an obstructive lung disease. It is a restrictive lung disease where you can't expand the chest. Any questions, guys? All right now, this is the end of it. If you have any questions, feel free to either you know, email me. All right Next week, we will have a longer period uh, and we'll go through a little bit of chapter 24, right? Okay. So if you guys have any questions, feel free. Uh, for this week, then just I'm going to release the, now that we've talked about the rest of this, 
I'm going to, the rest of 23, I'm going to release the written part tonight for you guys to do. You guys don't have to do it this weekend. You don't have to do it during spring break, right? Make sure you try to get it done probably early next week. So then you don't have a lot of it built up. And uh, we will, I'll send an email out later on about when the lab practical will be. Lab practical will be just online to be very similar to the test. All right? Okay. Have a good day. You too, guys. All right? Stay healthy. Thank you. Take care. Hey, Dr. Lee, real quick. Um, <laughs> for next week, do you know what time we're going to have lecture again? I'll say uh, 12 30 ish. Yeah, we can go at 12 30 ish, but we'll, you know, uh, if you guys. I've gotten people that say they need to leave at three at a, you know, like they, they can do it at two thirty. So whichever, can you do it at 1230? Um, what day are you looking at doing it on Wednesday? Yeah. Wednesday. Or, yeah. Wednesday, probably the Wednesday. Best. Um, Wednesday is definitely better. Um, anything earlier than that, it'd be kind of tough, but, um, I'll have some flexibility next week. So, um, yeah, twelve thirty should be fine. Yeah, I mean, we can, I can do it on two, on like a, at two or two thirty two. So it's not an issue with me. If I can get more students here, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I guess I'd say okay? leave it up. Yeah, that's fine. All right, I'll send an email. Okay. Okay. All right, take care, Perfect. guys. All right, thanks, Dr. Lee. Take care.